Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let's read together Psalm 41. Psalm 41 Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life. He will bless him in the land and not surrender him to the desire of his foes. The Lord will sustain him on his sickbed and restore him from his bed of illness. I said, O Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? Whenever one comes to see me, he speaks falsely, while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it abroad. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vile disease has beset him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friends whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O Lord, have mercy on me. Raise me up that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. When there seems no hope, we turn to God, and he gives us hope. Psalm 42 Psalm 42 As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Why are you so cast stone, O my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Now Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are God my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Our trust is in the Lord. Why be downcast? Let's be confident in him today. We turn now to Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 5 and then verses 21 to the end of the chapter. Number 6 The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of separation to the Lord as a Nazarite, he must abstain from wine and other fermented drink, and must not drink vinegar made from wine or from other fermented drink. He must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins, as long as he is a Nazarite, 
He must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or skins. During the entire period of his vow of separation, no razor may be used on his head. He must be holy until the period of his separation to the Lord is over. He must let the hair of his head grow long. This is the law of the Nazarite, who vows his offering to the Lord in accordance with his separation. In addition to whatever else he can afford, he must fulfill the vow he has made according to the law of the Nazarite. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The laws concerning Nazarites, those who choose to separate themselves for the, to the Lord for a special purpose for a time. We of course are a Nazarite people, always separated unto the Lord. Now we read Philemon. Paul's letter to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the saints. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while he was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel, but I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more. Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Paul writes to Philemon um, on behalf of Onesimus, a slave who has run away, and now he's returning to his master. Uh, and Paul writes to him to make sure that Onesimus isn't punished, but is received because while he was away, Onesimus found faith in the Lord Jesus and now returns not as a slave anymore, not merely as a slave, but as a brother in the Lord. We see God's grace extends to all people from the highest in society to the lowest and brings us together as brothers and sisters. It means that we treat each other differently than the way the world treats people. We treat each other as brothers and sisters, acknowledging that we are equal in Christ, whatever our social status. Let's pray together. 
Lord, we pray that we will have that attitude of uh, equality amongst ourselves in your church, that we will acknowledge that we are all sinners saved by grace. We all have nothing of any value except that which you give us. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to live in a way that is faithful and true to the gospel. Lord, we pray for Little Bramingham Farm uh, Retirement Home, and Lord, we pray for those who live there. We pray especially for Gladys Corley, our sister in the Lord, and pray, Lord, that you will be near to her, that you will know your loving hand surrounding her in these days. Uh, and Lord, we pray that when we go there to visit and we take our songs and hymns, that, Lord, you will bless and prosper that ministry that it may be a blessing to those we minister amongst. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>